it's not in the Talmud. There's a glimpse of it here and there of Gnosticism in the Talmud, but I think it was made popular by the Zohar, and the Zohar was made popular by the Ariza, and the Ariza was made popular by the Baal Shem Tov, and Chabad made all of them mainstream. That's why it's important to know Jewish history, because you're able to kind of place things in a chronological line, and then it gets you to demystify a lot of concepts, because you're like, oh, wait, I don't have to believe this. This thing is new. This concept was invented by this guy. And this. we have to stop deifying people. Judaism is the five books of Moses and the rulings established by the court of elders that we call our sages. We call them Chazal. That status ceased to exist after the Tanaim. So the Tanaim are like Rabbi Kiva, like Rabbi Yochanan Medzakai, the leaders that appear in the Mishnah. And that's it. And everything after that is just opinion. So that's Judaism in a nutshell. All right, nice. That was actually a nice little wrap. To put a nice little bow on it, it could be kind of uh, it's kind of daunting out there. I mean, even for myself, who who came to Judaism, rolled rolled with Chabad for uh, a good five six years, you can get lost pretty easily. I mean, to know what to do, what not to do. How do you keep yourself on the straight and narrow, so to speak? Stick to Torah. Stick to Torah, okay. Anything that you think that you should or shouldn't do or somebody tells you, confirm it through Torah. That's as simple as it gets. Just, okay, a person tells you to do A, B, and C, okay, take it on face value, but always, always, at the end of the day, verify through Torah. Is your, Tov is your yeah, Tovia always says verify through the Torah. He says if it's not, if you can't find it in the first five books, then it's not, you have to verify everything you're told. No, I dig that. I like that. That's a good answer, actually. So this is why like, I've always felt that Tovia Singer gives one response to people who are not converting, who are going to remain Gentiles, and different advice to people who live in a Jewish community. Now, I like that response, but that's a very unpopular response in the Orthodox world. If you say, I'm not going to do something because it doesn't appear in Torah, to be a rabbinic Jew, at least, is a bit more complicated than that. They'll be like, well, you don't believe in the oral Torah? You don't believe in the, in the statements of our rabbis? So that's already graduating to a different level that now that you've mastered Torah to a certain extent, I don't think anyone's fully going to master Torah. Now you're going to have to master rabbinic law and know the difference between a custom and a law and, and a medrash. So this is why I'm not a big supporter of leaving people Gentiles because what happens is that they become so Torah only that they become Karaites. Yeah, they and, teach themselves and they come up with their own definitions. And yeah, exactly. So that's dangerous. You know, I think the whole Karite movement as it exists today, the Nehemiah Gordon movement was created by Tovia Singer. Not intentionally, but what do you think people are going to do if all you do is teach them a Tanakh-based Torah and not encourage Orthodox conversion? People are hungry. People are inquisitive. They're not going to be left there. They're going to be like, you know, thank you, Rabbi Singer, for bringing me this far. But there's more for me to learn. And these guys who call themselves Karaites claim that they could teach it to me. I heard you guys talk about hell. What these Kana Mishini rabbis teach online is not what they teach to other Jews one-on-one -on -one or in a synagogue, right? Because the average Jew would kind of laugh. Like, of course, Orthodox Jews believe in eternal punishment and fire and it. it I'm not saying that's that's mandatory to believe, but it appears in the Talmud like this. It says even that uh, Jesus, I don't know if it's the same Yeshua, Yeshua Notri is boiling in something called Tzoa Rotachat, which is boiling excrement forever. And this is the eternal death for heretics. But, but we also know that a lot of it is descriptive language. It's, it's getting to a point, but it's using like just descriptive words. It's not like we're supposed to take it literally. We're supposed to know how to distinguish descriptive language from literal language. I encourage people not to take it literally, but I think the people who wrote it did take it literally. Of course, we don't take it literally fully, but theologically as a concept is there. It says that the reason we say... Um, Kaddish nowadays for the deceased, Kaddish Atum, the mourner's Kaddish, really the orphan's Kaddish, right. was because the story that there was a guy, there's a notion that before Shabbos, they let you out of Gehenna, and then there was a guy who was walking around in the graveyard, and he was burnt. I think he meets Rabbi Kiva. 
And then he says, tell my relatives to say words of Torah in my name to lighten my punishment like here punishment, in Gehenna. Yeah, yeah. So it, I've it's, read that it, one. This is why I don't think that the Noahide movement helps at all. I think it hurts. I think it should be Torah or nothing, full Torah. And when I mean full Torah, I'm a rabbinic Jew. It should be full oral and written Torah. But I think oral has to be explained with what a fine tooth comb. What huh? about the people? What about the people who don't want to convert? I know a whole bunch of people who you can beg them to do the conversion, and they just don't want to. They don't want to take on the halahad. They don't want to be. They don't want the responsibility of the law, but they want the truth. That's a problem. How can someone say that they don't want to convert when the Torah itself doesn't give another standard? Now, rabbinic Judaism does give another standard, which is to live like a Ben or a Bat Noach. But if they accept that, they've already begun accepting rabbinic Judaism. So they might as well continue accepting rabbinic Judaism. In other words, the Torah doesn't make a distinction between laws for Jews and laws for Gentiles, but the rabbis do. But once you accept that existence and call yourself a Noahide, then you've already began to learn and submit yourself to rabbinic ideas. So continue submitting yourself to rabbinic ideas and not have a teacher kind of speak and out of two sides of his mouth. That's a beautiful answer. Answer, And I, I have a real bone to pick with Orthodox Judaism. It, it's just every, every Orthodox shul I ever gone to, and they were all different to some degrees, but they always ragged on reform Jews and conservative Jews, and they mock atheist Jews and say, oh, look at them, how they changed halacha for their own benefit, how they, how it's a shan to the Judaism and Hashem, what they do, and they do this and they do, and he, okay, what about yourselves? Look, don't you listen to what you're saying? Don't you see the things that you're changing? According to halacha, how, how you're how you don't even accept. I mean, you, how many Orthodox Jews I, I I argue with on Facebook about how long it takes to convert? Uh, uh, you know how many times I, uh, I get that question? How oh, it, it doesn't take a day. Well, you know what? It does take a day if you go by the plain meaning of the halacha. It, it says that immediately you convert the person, right? It's like no Orthodox Jew would ever in the million years accept that. So who who are they? They're they're changing halakha for their own for their own uh, you know what I'm you know what I'm you know where I'm getting with it's just I, I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of every Jew, every Jewish group mocking and ridiculing another Jewish group. We're all Jews here. We're all supposed to be united. Let's stop. Let's stop hating on each other. Let's. And I, I, I never got hate from a reformed Jew. I, I mean, I don't know what they. I don't know what Orthodox Jews think, but they're not burning babies to Moloch in a reformed shul. They're not that evil, guys. I mean, <laughs> well, don't, don't they support the LBG community and the movement? Oh, okay. I, I, okay. It's not, it's not necessarily a good thing. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. But, th but for, for everything you can accuse a reformed Jew of doing wrong against Torah, an Orthodox Jew probably does something else against Torah in a different See, way. And I follow the, the, the Orthodox the orthodox path but i was never taught that like rabbi levine who i speak to quite frequently he posts stuff all the time about how you can convert for free in you in jerusalem and he gives the address to it and he he's always trying to help people like go on that path but he says if people don't want to convert and they reject it and they refuse there's nothing they can do but teach them how to be noahides in the world so that they at least have you know the they they at least are living a lawful life or, or one that Hashem has, you know, they have laws that they follow, like setting up their courts and not eating from live animals and doing things that are pleasing towards Hashem instead of, um, you know, burning babies in fires or whatever. I've That's only really met... I just want to say real quick, that is refreshing to hear. Go ahead, Rabbi. I've only really met two people in my life who wanted to remain Noites. And I think one of those persons wanted to remain a Noahide because it, it allowed them to live a very debaucherous Simple. life. Yeah. <laughs> the vast majority of people who call themselves Noahides really just want to be Jewish. By the simple fact that the only reason they know about Noahidism is because they came to Judaism already identifying as Israel. Like virtually everyone who calls themselves a Noahide nowadays at one time identified with Israel. Do you, you felt, think that they could be parts of Israel, like parts of the tribe that are returning now, and then they just don't have an accepted Judah as the king? Or what do you no. think is going on with the movement? No, I think that's a bigoted notion to think that God 
would draw you to Judaism just because of the blood that runs through your veins instead of the effort you put in searching for it. It's a Christian notion. Kabbalah has the same idea that the Jewish soul within you is in some way drawing you back. Well, I mean, I didn't choose what soul I was born with. So you're telling me that someone could be born intrinsically superior, spiritually superior to me? That's what it yeah. means that someone has a greater hunger for Torah than you do inherently, intrinsically. My husband's going through the whole conversion process. He, when he, the first thing he, when he heard Judaism, he said it confirmed everything he had ever known to be true about God is in his entire life. It's the first religion he ever accepted. So no, I don't think that he has no Jewish blood in him whatsoever that we've ever found. And he loves Hashem as much as I do. So no, I don't think that it is a blood thing. I never have. I was just asking you a simple question. If you think that it has to do with, with the tribes of Israel coming back into the fold or. Yes. I don't believe that the tribes of Israel are coming back. And this is a statement that appears in the Talmud. In I read Kalei. it. I know about right. it. Yeah. So Rabbi Kiva says that the tribes are not coming back. Why? Because it's a bigoted notion. Now, the reason the idea exists is because for a time when the 10 tribes were in Assyria, they had the opportunity to do tshuva. Like just like the Jews did tshuva in Babylon and were brought back to Israel. Right. And they stayed with them until they every last one of them absolutely refused and there was no turning away. Right. And then Joshua came back. Yeah. So, or not jo yeah. so the 10 lost tribes had their opportunity and that opportunity expired. Now to think that 3,000, 2,000 years down the road, God is going to give people some sort of spiritual lobotomy and bring them forcibly back to God. And there's many people pushing the whole notion of the Pashtuns and the B'nai Manasha and these people who weren't religiously Jewish when we found them, but just because they claim to have Semitic DNA, we're in some way going to make it easier for them to enter the Jewish people. Like even the Pashtuns aren't Jewish, they're Muslims. So it seems like we're elevating blood over ethics here. It makes us look bigoted to think that people are born intrinsically superior to others. If someone's intrinsically spiritually superior to you, that means that you're spiritually inferior to them. And this is a Kabbalistic notion as well, that Gentiles are, that the soul of a Gentile is on the level of an animal. And the soul of a Jew, whether he's wicked or or, or righteous, is head no. and shoulders above a Gentile's. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. I believe that what makes you a Jew is how you follow Torah and how you listen to Hashem and how you keep the commandments. And I believe that being a Jew is more than blood. I've always said that. But, you know, that's a really hard concept for some people to take because they believe that it was an inherited gift given to them through a bloodline. Mm -hmm. You know, so, when it comes to the, those Pashkam, and in, in, uh, in, I, uh, I think they're from what? Um, Afghanistan. Uh, they, they found that, that, you know, mezuzahs on doors, they wear talit, and you ask them, why do they why do they have these things? They have no idea. It's because they are only, they say, well, we've always done it. This is just what our ancestors did. So there, there's some. They don't believe in Torah. Yeah, so what's the well, point? There's some ability to it that they come from one of the lost, possibly one of the lost tribes. Right. What about the tribe of Gab from Spain? You know, Gad, they say Gad was in Spain and then they came back during the second temple destruction. I mean, th there's all kinds of stories all over the place. It doesn't entitle them for special treatment, according to the Torah. It doesn't like my, entitle it. My, wife's, well, my wife's family comes from uh, the conversos. They call them the conversos. They were basically um, for fall of... Um, where they were forced to say they were Christian, but they practiced Judaism in secret. Yeah, I have yeah. I have Sephardi Judaism. I have Sephardi Jew in me too. So I've, I got all, I know all the stories about it. But yeah. So, so my my wife's mother and her mother and her grandmother they all made challah bread on Friday night, lit candles, didn't work on Saturday, and and no one knew my my mother my wife never knew why her her mother and her my grandmother did these things, and they never told her they hid it. And event, and then one day she said that she she watched a YouTube video, and she's like, "Oh, lighting candles and making bread that's a, that's that's Jewish. That's a Jewish thing." And she pushed her mother like, "Why are you doing this? Is you you're doing this because you're Jewish?" And and she said that her mother finally broke down and said, "Yeah, shh, don't say anything. We, we in Brazil you don't want to you don't want anyone you know. to do to, to, you're Jewish. It, it's actually quite anti-Semitic the country, believe it or not. But I believe it. Yeah. yeah so." You know, that's that's something that's true. You know, that's something that really, you know, we, we don't we, I don't I think we live in a bubble a little bit. We don't really know what it's like to be Jewish 
surrounded by people that want to kill us and exterminate kill you. us. Yeah. And uh, most Jews live in that situation. So I can't sit here and say what the Pashkim Muslims are, are going through, you know, like I, living around the Taliban and Al Qaeda. Uh, you know what I mean? I would probably want to be a, a pretend, pretend to be a Muslim too, right? So, you know, let's try to, I don't know, we should make it easier. But we should definitely acknowledge that there's something to it. That's what I would say. That's my. Favorite. I mean, I think if it's really dangerous for them to live in such a manner and they don't believe in Torah, then perhaps you don't want to acknowledge it. I mean, who cares? Ultimately, who cares if someone has Jewish blood? Being Jewish means nothing. It's what you do after you become Jewish. But the simple fact that someone could be born Jewish means that being Jewish doesn't mean anything. Like Bernie Car Sanders and George right, Bernie Sanders, and Car right, Karl Marx, Trotsky. Only because someone's halachically Jewish doesn't mean that he's in a covenant with God. Someone could be in a covenant with God and not halachically Jewish, and someone could be halachically Jewish and not in a covenant with God. Something being halachic just means that it's legal, that if there was another court, that court could find you liable if you were living in the land of Israel for not keeping Shabbat, for eating hummets on Pesach. That's all it means to be halachic. But you could be a halachic Jew and a complete atheist, anti-God, spiritual criminal. So yeah, the the Jews that were born that turned away from Hashem, they have been the most dangerous people to civilization that I've read about. Well, look at America. Eighty percent of Jews from a political sphere, separating the religious right from the irreligious left. Eighty percent of the Jewish American population voted for Obama, Hillary Clinton. Now they're going to vote for either Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders, which is sad. So this shows that being Jewish does not mean that you're any closer to God than someone who's not ethnically Jewish. As a matter of fact, it shows the opposite. And I've mentioned this to a Chabad rabbi, and he says, ah, this also shows on what a high-level Jews are, because Jews have what's called a double Yetzirah. That means they have a double evil inclination to do bad, because you're so holy. You know, so you can't win with mystics. If you're good, you're good. If you're bad, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's silly. Heck, I would not join a religion if I felt that God believe this. Now, many people who convert, convert under these auspices and become bigger sellouts after they convert than the Jews themselves. How many times have I seen converts burn the bridge they just crossed? Trust me, like my biggest haters are converts who kind of say, oh, I'm going to attack Rabbi Shemeza so like my Chabad rabbi could think I'm cool. They make it harder for converts that even born Jews do, you know, just because they're trying to outdo them. Instead of saying, no, this is wrong. I'm clearly less ethical now than I was when I was a Christian. Right. I mean, these guys have to come to a realization that Judaism needs to be improved. And there's a lot of work to be done. This is why I encourage people to convert because people think, what can I bring to the table that some Jew hasn't brought? You know what? It was converts during the Second Temple period that saved Judaism back then. Uncleus, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Akiva, Shemaiva of Talian, all these big rabbis that were essentially converts that save Judaism. I think Judaism is also going to be saved nowadays by converts. I was just saying that tonight, that some of the most brilliant men we've had in Judaism were converts. I mean, how do you even separate them out? Because for the entire time Judaism has existed or uh, the Torah and Tanakh have been around, we have been accepting converts and we've had them, you know, they're a part of Judaism. You can't separate converts from Judaism. It just doesn't work. Well, apart from just... Uh accepting them, I think we should encourage more conversion, and I and I encourage people to proselytize. I proselytize. There's nothing in Judaism that is against it. I think that former Christians make the best Jews, just because we could learn a lot in terms of ethics and morality from evangelical Christians, just like Christians could ultimately learn a lot in terms of theology from Orthodox Jews. It's really a match made in heaven. That's what I want um, to say. Yeah, on my wall, I have a ton. I have more Christians than anything else. I talk to them about Judaism all day long. I've had people ask me how they convert. I always refer them to a rabbi or to tell them to, you know, the only thing I can do is tell them to find a Chabad house, basically. Well, and most rabbis would be against you doing that, unfortunately. They'll be like, we don't encourage people to convert. See, I've had, I've had, I've had it happen to me two ways. I've had, and I'm not, I'm not talking down on anybody. I've had Jews from New York really get after me and yell at me for that. And Jews from Israel tell me, thank you. And tell me I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and to refer them to, you know, Chabad houses or help them find a rabbi to talk to. Yeah, so it's a it different attitude. In America, people think that you're converting to marry one of their kids or to, I don't know, 
in Purify Their Gene Pool. While in Israel, they see strength in numbers, and they think that clearly it's a numbers game. If we had more Jews even in Israel, the world would be safer for Jews. But in America, people don't view it like that. Yeah, see, so I've had completely different experiences just depending on who I've talked to and where they're from. Rabbi, what's your website? TorahJudaism.com. And where can we, uh, what is it, the TorahJudaism.com slash conversion for those? All ones? right. Guys, every year, every year, every month, first Sunday of every month, come down to South Florida, get a free conversion. It's probably not going to be recognized by the Rabbanuts, probably not going to be recognized by your local synagogue. But being that everyone is charging an arm and a leg for conversion, let's break that racket and uh, offer free conversions and marriages. If for some reason you're in love with a girl who's serious about Judaism and, and you're Jewish and you feel you can't marry her and, you know, you're going to be forced to marry some, some mean Jappy girl, come down here. We'll convert her and then <laughs> you can marry her. Clearly, I mean, she has to be observant.